An Iruinga Tuna, Matamis Pagpuyan. This is a beautiful line from the song An Iruinga Tuna, The Motherland, composed by Illuminado Lucente. The line roughly translates to, Oh how sweet it is to live in our motherland. Similarly, the line Tuna ng Matamis Pagpuyan is also evident in the folk song Islahan Samar. Purianan, the noun form of Pagpuyan, implies a sense of permanence in space that one calls home. To date, only Leyte and Samar are considered as the Purianan of the Waray. Ang akon nga mabiskugon nga pagbati ha iyo nga tanan, I am Lakan Uhay Dorado Alegre, a Waray writer from Tacloban, and I wanted to share with you how Purianan, the Waray concept of home, can be a framework to better appreciate art and culture in and of Eastern Visayas. Pinoy anthropologist Prospero Covar said that there are three kinds of space for the Filipino. Kalikasan, the natural space. Kalikhaan, the cultural space. And Kabatlayaan, the supernatural space. Found in several Waray artistic forms are the many distinct characteristics and qualities of Puryanan. Its sensitivity towards the natural, its deep relationships forged in Kalikhaan, and the sacredness of Kabatlayaan. The best artistic works in Eastern Visayas are manifestations of these qualities. There is the wooden mosaic door, Kadayaw Mada Pagsidlitan Adlaw by Archie Zavala that exhibits several cultural practices and natural resources found only in Leyte and Samar. There is also the film Maupay Nga Adlaw Puniti Kita which reflects the struggle of uncovering the truth in Tacloban. There is also the folk song Di Ak Nahuhulog that dramatizes the struggle of the Waray during World War II. We, the Waray, express ourselves best, our pagkawaray in art. As a Waray artist myself, connecting with my Puri Anan has not just heightened my sensitivity towards the world, but has also allowed me to create literary works that reflect our collective experience. Puri Anan deepened my pagkatawo, my personhood, and my pagkawaray, my cultural identity. No matter where I am, no matter where I go, I bring this with me. For young Waray artists and creatives, remember that Puri Anan is embedded in your DNA. Beyond the art and the creative, I also urge you to reflect on this question. How can the concept of Puri Anan enrich our lives? I'm Lakan Uhay Dorado Alegre, a Waray writer and critic from Tacloban. Damo nga salamat, Waray non padayon! Can design save the world? This may sound messianic, but it is important to know the relevance of design in our daily lives. I am Hyder Milan. I am an interior designer from Baybay Leyte, and I run an eponymous multidisciplinary design studio in Tacloban City. Growing up, there is so much to draw inspiration from our local history and our rich biodiversity. Studying history through the accounts of historians like Alcina and Scott, one can visualize how simple activities like weaving becomes part of our daily living, how spirituality is present in the art of tattoo making, and how our forefathers were excellent goldsmiths. I keep this body of knowledge in a memory box and take out a piece and parcel every time I need an inspiration. I use these inspirations to form a strong cultural identity and interpret these forms into a modern context for global appeal. For example, Banig is usually used as mats or wall cladding. I use it as a window treatment in one of my projects. I took inspiration from the tattoo patterns and use it in a contemporary way when we designed our regional headquarters of our government office. The gold collection from Ayala Museum was also an inspiration of a hotel we are currently designing. All of these are inspired from a rich cultural landscape. Working with the different communities around the region exposed me not only to the richness of our culture, but also of our natural resources. Eastern Visayas is a home to a variety of non-timber materials that we can develop into products. We design products made of carbo horns, shells, um, tico grass, axam reeds, and coconut shells, among others. We have developed a style that is strongly Filipino, but with a global appeal. Winning Metrobank Art and Design Excellence in 2010 opened a lot of doors for me as a young designer. It became a platform for my advocacy in sustainable design. In 2013, the construction industry in Tacloban was gaining momentum when Hayan came and ravaged the region. I have seen so many lives and property lost to climate change. In this part of the world, it is no longer just a subject of roundtable discussions, but a reality that we face year after year. 
Kayan is a wake up call for action. I asked myself, what is my role as a designer in disaster response? How can we stay relevant to society after calamity? Honestly, I do not know the answers during that time. I immersed myself in community development works. I volunteered for Metrobank Foundation's Project Heart, where a team of artists and designers went around high and affected areas, offering art therapy to school teachers needing psychosocial support. These experiences taught me the basics of community engagement and how to bring sustainable design solutions to humanitarian crisis. My 20 years design journey taught me that design is meaningless without humanity. Spaces and objects will remain just forms without a soul. After all, good design will make lives better. It is time that we design with meaning, design with purpose, and design with impact. It's about time we change their own notion about design being exclusive for those who can afford it. It is by bridging the gap between design and low-income communities that we realize design is for everyone. There's a film from 1954 entitled Dora Iwara. It was a caricature portrayal of Sabarnons migrating to Manila, although these themes were barely depicted in the film. No Warainon was even casted in the film. Now, one might be tempted to say that there wasn't any talents or creatives at the time because that's simply not the truth. In fact, one of the first Filipinos who made it in Hollywood was actually from Tacloban City. His name was Rudy Robles. In our verbal form of expression alone, it is rooted from a nuanced etymology. And more often than not, it does not pass through the barriers of translation. Narrating my realities through my mother tongue comes naturally to my chosen form of expression. Because in Philippine cinema, it is multidimensional and has subtle inter-island nuances. Hello, Yellow. I am Chicken Lagaya. I am a Warainon filmmaker. And oh my god, this kanding is right over here. In the ripe year of the pandemic of 2020, I gave birth to the film Nyawa Mauli Olena. It was part of an omnibus film entitled Age of Light. At the time, I was a fresh graduate and I was doing some soul-eating office job. And I was enclosed in four walls. If you've seen the film, you could literally hear how I was not okay. Um, I was in my highest anxieties and deepest depression knowing that my friends and family were in all forms of risks and I was stuck in my four walls. The way that the system manages us like numbers, it's a reflection of how they deprive us of our humanity. And when the system acts like so, our nuanced experiences are frequently mistranslated to the dominant platforms. I'd like to conclude circling back to the film What I Want. You see, I'd like to consider that film as an indicator, as an indicator that what I narratives has always been there and has always been deserving of being expressed. Now, I think this is the best time to do it because there are also much more inclusive spaces in order to express, to express our regionality. I refuse to be a mispronounced fact. I refuse to be just a number in the news of calamities because the nuances of my experiences matter and they deserve to be in the dominant platform. They deserve to be expressed and to be out there. The realities of our ancestral domain are the mirrors of our archipelago. We start internalizing our existence by expressing through our mother tongue.